Hi, I'd like to share some notes on this Energy S8.2 subwoofer that I, I was going to say repair, but it wasn't much of a repair, as you'll see. So first, to take this thing apart, I found out the smart thing to do is to get the front module out. Uh, there's six bolts, and there's the classic uh, bolt hidden behind the logo trick here that uh, wasn't obvious at first. Then you can pull out the front panel, uh, the yeah, the front panel a bit, but it's held back by two wire harnesses that go all the way back through those two clamps in the back. So what I do then is remove the rear power section just far enough that you can sort of slide those wires out of the clamps, and then it should give you just about enough room to disconnect the the plugs either on the on the front panel section or the rear, and then the rest is pretty obvious. Next, on this unit, it, uh, it was acting kind of weird. It would turn on a bit, uh, you'd hear some rumbling coming out of the speaker, then it would stop altogether, and just before I took it apart, it was actually not doing anything anymore. Not even the, the front LED would light up. So I spent time uh, looking at the circuits, and I actually traced part of the schematics. I also tried the power section on its own, it seemed fine, and at some point during testing it just quit altogether, it wasn't doing anything anymore. It didn't take long to realize the fuse has actually had actually blown, but just looking at the fuse it wasn't really obvious, and I suspect maybe that's what was causing the problems, maybe it was just barely making contact. So anyway, after replacing it with a new fuse, everything was uh, back in order. Here is the partial schematics that I've been working on, and it, it's very incomplete, but I got most of the power section worked out. It's a sort of class AB, I guess, a MOSFET state, power stage, and interesting is the the heat sinks are clamped directly to the to the tab of these uh, these parts here, so you got to be careful. One heat sink is sitting at uh, the speaker output voltage on this one here, and the other one is sitting at uh, at the positive rail. So you, you got to be careful if you're probing around that circuit while it's it's plugged in. Well, obviously you should be careful anyway if you're working on uh, live equipment, but especially careful in this case. And the other interesting thing is uh, the manual claims this has an auto power off function. But, as far as I can tell, the only thing that powers off <laughs> is the front LED. If there's no signal for a couple minutes, it's with this circuit, I believe, where you have a large capacitance, um, large resistors, and the signal is somewhere here, so it gets rectified. If it's below the threshold, then well, something to that, to that effect. I didn't find any connection between this circuit and any of the power sections, so yeah, it doesn't really power off anything.